And there's huge multinational contract research organizations that you know, run these trials, including in the U.S., by the way, that say, hey, if you want to get started, it's a 43% tax rebate if we go in Australia. It takes six weeks for the government to approve your protocol, provided you've demonstrated the product is safe. It's not like they're not reviewing the material. It's like they're, they're comp I don't want to say they're compensating. That's the wrong choice of word. They're incentivizing research. They're incentivizing development. UK is another great example. Um, they've got like NHRA, I think is the acronym. NHRA, yeah. Yeah, so it's this, you know, government working group that is, it's like a business development group for, for medical products. How novel. I mean, it's fascinating. It's like they actually want to invest in medical technology that could help their population. So you go to them and you say, hey, I've got this idea. They, on their own, will put together a working group of doctors. They bring in their experts on the phone. And then they'll help you run them. They'll help, them set, they'll help you with the protocols. They'll help you get the centers connected because the socialized medicine makes it easy with you know all the different sites out there. They're investing in their populations going forward. And maybe that's just a mechanism because the government pays for all healthcare. I mean, maybe there's a much bigger, you know, theme going there. Like UK has a CEO of their health system. I mean, can you imagine the FDA having a CEO actually forecasting future costs of the population? We're, we're giggling about it, but it may not be a bad thing to think about. It's like something's going to cost the government trillions of dollars or billions of dollars over the course of the next 10, 20 years. Maybe we should invest in it now. That's how other countries are thinking.